We're going to celebrate uh, what happened last Saturday. I was uh, in that arena. I've said it before, Golden One Center for the uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich shot uh, against the Lakers. I was there for the opening concert with uh, Paul McCartney. The upper bowl. They didn't even sell the upper bowl. They sold out the lower bowl. That's the loudest I've ever heard it. And we played the highlights on the air. Wild. It was. It was. And the reason why it was so loud is because uh, this uh, this next guest uh, landed an overhand right that uh, that absolutely shook the entire city of Sacramento. I feel weird calling him the California kid. It's the California dad. Uh, the one, the only Uriah Faber. Hello, Uriah. What's up, guys? You tell me, dude. How's your hand? Did you, did you hurt it at all? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You know, you hit, you hit, you hurt your hand when you hit people in the wrong spot, which I have done before. Actually, in that arena against Mike Brown. Yep. For those that remember, that was pretty rough. But uh, no, that was a clean one. Put him on the canvas, so that was that was nice. Is that like in, in baseball, like when you connect, you just know, like, man, I really got into that one. Is that the same thing when when you catch a guy square on the jaw like that? Yeah, pretty much. It's uh, and I, This was actually in the temple, but, um, yeah, normally you hit a guy on the button, it's it's a kind of a smooth thing. So that was a, that was nice, man. No hand injuries and, and uh, made, made the city proud. That was fun. Dude, that was insane. And... You know, you had this forty-year-old uh, guy. Maybe he was washed up. Who knows? Coming back against this fifteen-and-one dude. I don't know if you were aware of this or not, but you were a fairly heavy underdog. You, you bet a hundred bucks on you. You would have won three hundred and twenty-five dollars. And and this was uh, about as quick a knockout as possible. Uh, does any of that matter to you when you're when you're leading up? At this point in your career, do you use that as motivation at all, or do you not care about any of that crap? I didn't even know that. Yeah. I mean. I- I mean, I've never looked at odds or anything like that. So, uh, but I mean, that's kind of weird that I'd be an underdog of all things. I mean, I guess people are, the question is, have you, have you been skipping a beat since you've been out for two and a half years? But people are out for two and a half years all the time. Um, uh, most of the time they get in trouble for, for, for something and they get suspended. But um, I just took a, a break myself. So, um, you know, in my mind, I was definitely the favorite. And, and so when I, uh, you know, saw the odds afterwards, I was like, really? I mean, who, who makes those odds? Mm-hmm. I don't even know how that works. Yeah. in your home field too, by the way, which is a major, is that Uriah, I, I, I know that you have so much love for the fans. I know that you love fighting in your in, in Sacramento. Oh. I, I, we, everyone knows that, but I, I'm curious once you're in the octagon, d- is that crowd truly an advantage for you? Or do you block it you out? No, I feel, I feel like, uh, I mean, just the energy in general, but I, I can honestly say everywhere I've gone, when I fought in the Philippines against Frankie Edgar, when I fought in Canada, and, um, you know, I've, I've fought all over the, the U.S. and the world. I mean, I, I get a uh, I get a, a big raise, a big rise from the, from the crowd every single time, which, which I feel fortunate. You know, but um, but in Sacramento, it is probably a little bit more, and and uh, you know, looking around and seeing familiar faces, that's something that that always happens the most in Sacramento. I mean, I I could see friends from elementary school and, and friends from my old neighborhood and and business guys I'm, I'm I'm working with and and my teammates and like that 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 in itself is is pretty unreal. You're right, Faber joining us. Uh, the guys are going to love me name dropping here, but while I was on vacation last week, I hooked up with our mutual friend Ariel Hawani oh on his show. God. Hey, get, get it out of your head. Can you do it man. after the guest, please? Yeah, Can okay, you drag me out? Yeah. <laughs> the subject was, of course, you. And uh, one of the things uh, we talked about was when uh, my goofy ass was carrying your belt for the Pulver fight. And I had mentioned that I'm not really a spiritual guy, but when you've got tens of thousands of people all focusing their energy including that spotlight on you. It's something that you can't describe unless you're there. It, it's And it wasn't focused on me. It was focused on you. I was directly behind you. But I I know it sounds stupid. I felt it. Like, I physically felt that energy. You are kind of a, a, a spiritual dude. Like, you're, you're, you, you're in touch with that side of yourself. Do you still kind of, have you gotten used to that? Or when that spotlight comes on and you're saying hi, mom, to the camera, do you still almost physically feel that energy pinpointed on you? Um. Yeah, I mean, you really do, and, and that's the closest thing I'll get to being a rock star is, is walking out in that arena and 
have everybody focus on you and um, it's it's pretty unreal and, and that's cool. Uh, you know, I just saw a picture actually of of, uh, of that day when you're behind us and everything else, which is awesome. And we actually for this fight, I had uh, the Ranger Road, it's a nonprofit that one of our uh, our former active fighters, Mikhail Venikoff, has put together. And so we had you know vets that are amputees that that walked us all out to the cage, which is, which is an awesome experience. They were all sitting in front row. And, um, and so being able to share that with, with, you know, you and I are childhood friends and, and have, being able to share it with the, with the Ranger Road vets. Yep. And actually my, my buddy, Devin Johnson, who's, who's got a, uh, you know, he, he was a, one of our teammates that, that suffered a, a, a neck injury. He was able to walk out, with me wow. at one point to, to the octagon. So it is kind of a spiritual thing. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a super unique experience. And, and so I'm, I'm pretty pumped to be able to have had it as many times as I have, but also to share it a little bit. Absolutely. You're right. Faber joining us. Um, first time you've had a fight as California dad instead of California kid. Does that make any difference in training? Does that make any difference when you're in there? Does that make any difference in motivation? Uh, I know, I know your baby's not old enough to know what's going on yet, but that, did that change anything for you at all? You know, I had never had trouble getting motivated for fights, but I mean, it's obviously a really instinctual thing to have, uh, you know, have a, a bigger purpose when you, when you have a, have a baby now and, and so I definitely felt that in preparation, just, you know, coming home at the end of the day or in the middle of the day and, and getting that extra motivation reminder of oh, why you're doing this stuff. It's, it's very difficult. I mean, getting back into fight camp is a hard thing uh, for those that haven't done it and haven't done it correctly. It's, it's super, you know, demanding on the body, on the mind, on your time. Etc. So having the baby is is definitely a, a reminder of, of why you're doing it and uh, the bigger picture and and you know she won't know this now but but she'll get to watch some of the videos of us uh, on the lead up where she's she's part of it and and so it, it'll be a cool thing for her at some point in her life. Wrapping up with Uriah Faber, I, I had joked that. When people asked uh, why is Faber coming back, I said, "Dude, he had a kid. Anybody who's had a kid understands you don't get to sleep and you want to get out of the house. He was probably bored and scratching his uh, <laughs> rear end. But, but in in truth, why did you come back? You were you were comfortable. You were fine. You have many out of octagon businesses. You're you're not broke. Uh, you're not that guy. What? Wh- why did you step back in? You know, I feel like uh, part of it is just getting motivated by other things. I've, I've like had an itch to, to fight a little bit. Um, I've had an itch to kind of compete and I've, and I've done that on, on some level with these grappling matches I've done. You know, I did one in Oregon, yep. uh, against a couple time world champion, seven time world champion, Paul Meow in Jiu Jitsu. And then I fought against soccer. Rock. Oh, we lost him. I think. 100, there you are. Sorry, I lost you for a second, Faber. Go ahead. Go ahead, dude. I lost you for a quick second. And I started training for that stuff and taking it serious. I just couldn't help but just think about training everything and actually getting a real fight. And so it was just something that was, like, calling for me. And then uh, I kind of prepped myself at the beginning of the year, January, that I was I was going to get myself in shape. I was getting, you know, frustrated in some regards with, what to show these guys how it's done, you know, the the dedication and, and how you attack a training camp and then I was getting motivated by some of the guys that were that were doing it right where you know, reminding me of, of why I stood out for so long and then looking at the current landscape of the of the of the sport, there's a lot to gain still and and you know, business one thing, it's it's business is its own fight and you have you know, all these things that you're doing and whatnot, but I'm, I'm still living in the gym, you know, it's like my fantasy factory, the, the, the gym over there, I've got my offices there and, and I can spend a whole day, you know, just keep myself busy with all the things I'm working on. But at the end of the day, it's still business. I'm, I'm still getting paid to do it. And, and 
and uh, the sport's still growing massively, and I, and I still know in my heart that I'm competitive. I could be a world champ. Like that, that's the way I think about things. So um, I just wanted to jump out, and I, so I so I did. You you wait too long, there won't be those opportunities to jump out, and and uh, and it just meant a lot at the time. And I felt like you know it's it's time to go, and if I don't go now, I won't go. And and uh, there's a lot of people that stop in life and don't do things because it's going to be too difficult or it's scary or. Um, you know, don't want to risk this or risk that. And, and for me, I'm just like, you know what? I'm the type of person that, that, that if I want to do something, I'm going to do it. I don't care, you know, what, what it means to anyone else. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move forward and, and, and accomplish. And so that's what I did. You're at favor with us just under a minute and a perfect way to end the interview. Uh, I can think of no better story uh, than you coming back at 40 years old, uh, a new dad, and holding that UFC belt. And Dana White may be a lot of things, but he's not stupid. Uh, that is easily, and that's no bias on my part, uh, that is the biggest money-making fight at that weight class, you and Henry Cejudo. Um, why Why will you hold that belt if you guys face off in the octagon? You know, Henry Cejudo is a 125-pound fighter. Uh, he's a big 125 pound fighter and he, and he went up and, and got the 135 pound bat as well. But, um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's a great match. He, he's a Olympic level wrestler. Uh, I was a division one wrestler, you know, wrestled at the highest level. Um, my jujitsu, I've, I've gone against multiple world champions, submitted guys that have never been submitted and have, I think, you know, the record for the most submissions in the UFC, WC, strike force, all combined with 19. Um, if it goes to the ground, I feel very confident I'll have the edge. Uh, on the feet, um, you know, you guys saw my last two fights, uh, both here in the arena. I, I dropped uh, Brad Pickett, who's got a win over Demetrius Johnson, one of the best fighters of all time. Dropped him with a left hook. Dropped uh, Ricky Simone, a 26-year-old guy with the overhand right. Um, I don't fatigue in fights. I never have, and I'm mentally strong. And I think that Cejudo is super mentally strong. And so he's he's definitely, you know, broke guys that, that couldn't hang with his pace or his mentality, and that would never happen to me. So I think it's a great matchup. Um, he actually called me out after his last fight, which uh, he he'd come to our gym ten years ago, and when he was, you know, a young man and and he talked about getting into MMA and then said, Hey, maybe me and you will fight someday. And, and I knew he was serious and, and I knew it was possible because he's the type of guy that believes in, in himself and anything's possible. And, and so am I. So, um, it's, it's a good fight, man. It's a good matchup. I think it's going to be a, uh, uh, a little while till he's healed up, but you know, I'm getting younger. Apparently I just took 26. I, I'm going to, that fight was not only for some money, but it was also for age. I took, Ricky Simone's age. I'm now 26 years old, so I got some time. Well, don't lose that old man strength, dude. That's how you're knocking people out. Don't forget. Uh, Uriah Faber with us. Uh, congratulations. You know this, but we're all so very damn proud of you. I will see you in a few hours out at your golf tournament. I'll be talking about that on Monday uh, and everything you continue to do and your friends do for the community. So I'll see you in a few, dude. Thanks so much for getting up this early. Yeah, we'll see you at the, uh, at the golf tournament. I'll be out there. You know, all the guys have talked to Andre Feely and, and Josh Emmett and Benito and, and, and the rest of the guys that were out there scrapping this weekend, and um, they're going to be there as well. And, folks, if you're listening, come check out the gym. We've got all sorts of cool classes, 6700 Folsom Boulevard um, right here in East Sac. And then we've got our UFC gym, Uriah Faber, in, in, in Folsom and one in Rockland now. Um, go get in shape, learn some cool stuff, and... and uh, and, and support MMA in this community and, and fitness in general. We'll double up on that. And we'll tweet out all the information as well. Absolutely. Go check out your eyes. Gyms join up and uh, learn and get trained by the best in the absolute business or just get in shape. You don't have to be a fighter. And that's the fun part, buddy. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right. All right. See you in a bit. Bye-bye. Bye. The drive.